What's good? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. We're getting a much clearer picture of what's coming this spring because Apple has filed three new unreleased Mac computers to the Eurasian Economic Database, which were first spotted by website Consumac. Now the timing is just before the rumored Apple spring event that could happen on March 8th or around that time according to Bloomberg. The three new Mac models were listed with model numbers A2615, A2686, and A2681, and they're all listed as running Mac OS Monterey. But even more interesting is that one of the Macs, model A2681, is described to be a portable personal computer, which would be an Apple laptop. And then the other two, they're just described as desktop computers. Now, Apple historically files new products in the Eurasian Economic Database because it's required by law for any new products with encryption. And it's a big tell for what's coming next from Apple. Even about a month ago, filings for what are believed to be the next iPhone SE third generation and the next iPad Air were also revealed through that. So now, Three new Macs have been confirmed by Apple's filings to be coming very soon. Then we have a new report that claims that Apple will debut its latest M2 Apple Silicon chip in a refreshed 13 inch MacBook Pro model next month that will have no significant design changes, none whatsoever. Now this source says this new MacBook Pro 13 inch will keep the same exact design as the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro. It will still include the Apple Touch Bar and it will not get any new bells or whistles like the new mini LED with ProMotion display or anything like that. So there will be no notch either here. It's exactly what we've seen before. The source is the same person who also revealed last year's MacBook Pro with a notch, but no face ID recognition. And that was leaked just a couple days before the event, which surprised a lot of people, got the discussions going, and then it turned out to be true. So the new Apple M2 is rumored to have the same number of CPU cores at eight as the M1 chip, but then up to 10 GPU cores, which is higher than the seven or eight core offering from last year's M1. And then it will potentially be more energy efficient with improved performance. Now, Apple first debuted the M1 lineup with the new internals for the MacBook Air, the MacBook Pro 13 inch, and the Mac Mini, and the designs, they all stayed the same. And it could be doing a similar debut with the M2 13 inch MacBook Pro now. Also, all signs pointing to a new MacBook Air being a complete redesign or happening later this summer. So we're not expecting to see it at this spring event. So I honestly don't know this for a fact, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that at Apple spring event, we're gonna see the first breakdown of this new M2 chip with improved performance over the M1. They'll show us how it all plays out. And then the hardware, it's gonna be featured in it will be the new M2 13 inch MacBook Pro. And then the other two desktops, I'm gonna guess that those are likely two different variations of the Mac mini. So that allows them to keep the M1 Pro and M1 Max as the kind of current powerhouses for the Pro models while still keeping the door open for a potentially even more powerful M2 Pro or M2 Max like chips for whatever's coming, maybe the new iMac Pro later this year and even the new Mac Pros. Plus, this move to just have an entry level product using the new chip and then keeping the same old, same old form factors from at least three years ago. That's a classic Tim Cook move. I mean, this is right out of the Tim Cook playbook and it offers entry level hardware at an affordable price by using previous designs. You know, we've seen it with the iPhone, we've seen it with the iPad lineups, and now it looks like the same strategy is coming to the 13 inch MacBook Pro. So for all of you who hate that I hate the touch bar, it's still here on the upcoming 13 inch. So go buy it and stop complaining to me. It still lives. And remember, the M1, it made its official debut in the current MacBook Air, 13 inch MacBook Pro and Mac Mini back in November of 2020. Plus the new rumored MacBook Airs in its all new colors, you know, they've got to have their own time to shine. And this is just the beginning of the year. Reports have already teased us that this will be one of Apple's biggest years for hardware announcements. I just think of the spring event kind of as the appetizer for 2022 from Apple because they are just warming us up. So what type of performance might we expect from the new M2 chip? We're gonna have a little fun here and none of these upcoming results are official, but Macworld's Jason Cross took a look at the generational leap from the A14 chip to the A15 and then compared that jump from the M1 chip to the M2 chip since the M1 is based on the basic architecture of the A14 chip. Now the numbers do not factor in if there will be any additional performance gains from the new M2's potential four nanometer process that can help boost power performance and extended battery life, but you can see the assumption is that the M2 
will be a slightly better performer than the M1 for a single score performance. But then if you go to multi-core score performance, the M2 and M2 Max, they take significantly bigger leaps compared to the M1 as well. So right now, we are potentially looking at a third generation iPhone SE, a new fifth generation iPad Air, a new M2 13 inch MacBook Pro, and new M2 Mac minis at Apple's spring event. Now you also know, I cannot do a show without some sort of iPhone 14 Pro news, so get excited if this gets you excited, but according to reports from Asia, the new iPhone 14 Pro will feature eight gigs of RAM, which would be the most amount of memory ever put inside of an iPhone. I know some of you are like, really, eight? Well, the current iPhone 13 Pro that has six gigs of RAM, so did the 12 Pro, and of course, more RAM is never a bad thing, but honestly, do I really see it making that much of a difference? No, in fact, the way Apple's ARM processors deal with memory management is just so efficient that on something like even an M1 13 inch MacBook Pro that I got to test out last year, I was editing 4K video and rendering out huge files faster than I ever have before. And at the time, I thought it had a fully loaded machine with 16 gigs of RAM, but in fact, it was an entry level eight gig machine and there was not one moment where it felt slow or laggy because of that RAM allocation. So yeah, eight gigs of RAM coming to the iPhone 14 Pro I could see it maybe making a difference for creators making content on their mobile devices or exporting video from their phone. But for most people, it's like whoopee, psychologically, yeah. More RAM is better, but this is not gonna be an earth shattering announcement. I'm honestly more curious if it's also being bumped up to set up maybe a baseline for Apple's potential new AR VR headset down the road. Maybe it's a minimum requirement. You know, it was early reported to be targeting the end of this year, but now other reports say that headset has been pushed out to sometime in 2023. So. Maybe that might be another reason why they're finally getting to eight gigs of memory. Also, in an interview with Billboard, Apple's VP of Music said that the entire catalog of their 75 million songs are now all available in lossless after making the promise in June of last year. Now, let's be honest, it's still difficult for most people to make out those subtle differences or improvements when they listen to a lossless file. It's there, but the other issue to me is that you still can't listen to lossless on every Apple device. In some cases, you'll need a wired connection to listen it to it on your Mac, or you can hear it through its speakers. Uh, the HomePod supports it, and so does listening on your iPhone through its physical speakers, but no one is gonna do that for lossless audio. It also doesn't work with any of Apple's wireless audio products like AirPods or AirPods Max because Bluetooth connections, they don't support the bandwidth that's needed for it. So my hope is that Apple announces this year, maybe WWDC, the next generation of AirPlay, which let's say will most likely be called AirPlay 3, and that brings more bandwidth and lossless audio support to the table in 2022. Plus, we also have the rumors that the next-gen AirPods Pro 2 will support lossless audio, so they could also be their first wireless headphones to support that feature. Now, Apple also told Billboard that more than half of Apple Music listeners are using spatial audio, and it does absolutely shine depending on the mix or the genre of music when it's done very well, but it doesn't always sound the greatest either. I would also say that a majority of those users probably don't even realize that they're listening to Apple Music tracks with spatial audio. Some of you are probably like, oh, I guess I have been, I know. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you on the next video. Take care and be safe. Peace and love.